Good evening. Um, I'm Bruce, and this is my colleague Krista, and we are both from Sigma Aldrich, so Legacy Sigma Aldrich that was acquired by Merck about two years ago. Um, my background is in chemistry, and Krista's background is in biomedical engineer, engineering, so I guess you might be wondering, why is a chemist and a biomedical engineer talking to you about data science? So um, this is kind of a, a story of how we, um, how we kind of transformed from a digital marketing group into a, into a data science group. And part of it is uh, potentially because of NIME. So um, I think this is what Krista thinks I look like. So <laughs> this, is, this is a picture of me being angry at my computer. So um, around 2011, I was mostly doing things inside of Access Databases with Visual Basic um, programming behind it. And having a lot of issues. So my, my access databases were blowing up because I was putting too much data in them, or my code was blowing up because I'm not that good of a programmer. Um, and I had a problem that I wanted to solve, and that problem was we had a bunch of chemicals. So I don't know how many, I don't know how many of you guys are, you know, uh, know much about chemistry, but there's something called privileged scaffolds, which are kind of important in the, in the drug market. And we wanted to identify which, which privileged scaffolds um, some of our compounds contained. And I, I read about this thing called NIME, and I thought, ah, this sounds like it might be able to solve my problem. So I downloaded it, and I had no idea how to use it. So um, even Greg said earlier, there, there's a learning curve with everything, right? So I downloaded it, couldn't figure out how to use it, um, tried to access the example server, and I couldn't access the example server. So after a couple days of trying, I finally gave up. And moved on to a different project. Uh, but I'm kind of stubborn. So the project came up again a couple years ago, and, uh, or a couple years later. So in 2013, um, we ended up building, I ended up building this, this out, um, updated Dime, which Dime updates itself, which is really cool, um, and was able to figure out how to connect to my databases, figured out that uh, I just needed to put a proxy server into my preferences, and. NIME started working for me. And so this is my Hello World example from NIME. So this is actually almost my first workflow that I wrote. So it has a, it has a set of structures that get fed in. It hits an Oracle with a, um, with a commercial cheminformatics cartridge running on it and classifies all my structures for me, which is, which is really cool. Um, just as a side note, uh, this is actually something that we still use today. But instead of running on Oracle, I actually run it on Postgres and RDKit, so we run it completely open source. We use NIME as the front end for it, and it works beautifully. So if you ever need a structure search engine, there's some great open source tools for you. Um, so moving on, um, 2014. 2014 was the day that, uh, that digital marketing really grew up. So the, the group that we were in, uh, we had a couple week whiteboarding session on how to help our search engine marketing team how to help them get their data from all of our crazy databases with a whole bunch of logic that they had into our advertising platforms. Um, so we were grabbing product information out of Postgres databases. We were grabbing um, product availability information out of Oracle. We were getting web analytics data out of SQL Server and then uh, sitting down and, and just coding all of, all of this logic out. And the same thing Greg just showed you, a bunch of little boxes connected to each other. And it worked. And we helped our advertising group make a lot of money. So if you've ever, if you've ever, been, on a, if you've ever been on Google and you've typed in like a chemical name or if you like turn over the, the ingredients on, a, on a, you know, something that you're eating and you, know, you, can't, you don't recognize some of those terms, punch one of those into Google and you'll very likely see an ad to one of our products. And it's because of a project like this. And uh, this is actually something that is still, um, still used today, still used almost on a daily basis. And um, today we've grown up a little bit. We use, uh, we use Google BigQuery and SAP HANA that are, that are much faster and much more scalable. Um, but this is really, I think, what opened up us to projects. So business people coming to us with real projects, um, things that they couldn't figure out how to do. And I think you know, we, get, we get a lot of weird questions. And the best questions are the people that come to us and say, I wish I knew how to fill in the blank. And it's those really open-ended questions that are really what drive interesting problems that we love to work on. Um, so following this, getting a lot of inquiries from business people, many more than I could handle. So that's where Krista comes in. 
Um, so just prior to her being hired, my manager said, you need a data scientist. And I said, we need a what? <laughs> Didn't even know that word existed. It, it does. I can guarantee you it does. Um, so I actually hired a data scientist very shortly, very shortly after that. And then Krista was maybe a month or two later. A week, a week later. So, um, so Krista's going to tell you about her experiences using Nime. Thanks, Bruce. Um, so as Bruce mentioned, he went looking for, for data scientists, and unfortunately, he ended up with me. Uh, my background is in biomedical engineering, so I'm not truly a data scientist by training. Um, however, NIME helped me learn that you really don't have to be a data scientist to do data science. Um, I think Bruce showed me NIME like my second day on the job, and I was hooked. There's, there's, there's a learning curve, but I put this picture up here because these are all the elements of data science you're probably familiar with. And my knowledge kind of was in a few of these areas, namely math. I'm pretty good at talking, so the consulting part's fine, but there's a lot of these areas I knew nothing about. And when you truly know nothing about a topic, it's hard to teach yourself. What do you Google? What do you try to learn about? And so I have actually a funny story. So when I was in grad school, I studied system science, and it was nothing like anything I had ever done before. There was one night, it's like 2 AM, I'm working on a problem set our professor gave us. And I'm on like page 13 of my Google search in true desperation. I'm trying to figure out how the hell this equation works. What is this thing? And I finally find it. And the title of the web page is Solving Sixth Grade Equations. <laughs> so, with NIME, I really didn't have to go through that struggle. Um, if there was something I wanted to do, the forum was there. You click on any node, even a k-means clustering node. I was like, what the heck's clustering? Click on that, started reading about it. It taught me what to teach myself. And so uh, I actually went and counted last week how many NIME workflows, just ones that I've saved on my computer. And it's 181. So I've, I've used NIME quite a lot for a lot of different problems. and. Uh, I think it's pretty irreplaceable in my daily job. I don't think that there's really any data science problem I've worked on that I have not used NIME. And uh, as, as Bruce mentioned, or Greg, you can write Python scripts, R scripts, to do things that you may want to do that NIME doesn't have a node for. But really, you can, you can code without coding. And that's, that's pretty cool. So I'll talk a little bit more later about some of those actual projects, but I think Bruce can finish up our timeline. So 189 workflows. So as a, as a data scientist or you know, for data scientists in our group, their job is to build data products. So to build interactive solutions to deliver back to our business people. And in my opinion, a nine workflow in many cases can be a data product. It's, we can put it on a user's computer. They don't need to install like, you know, anything super crazy. We can usually teach them how to do it within a short period of time. It, it can be a data product. Um, and, and yeah, you don't need to, you don't necessarily be, need to be the best, best coder. Um, so speaking of code, um, I'm not going to really get into much detail on this because I think it's been covered, but, um, uh, if it doesn't exist, you can build it. So if you like Python or if you like, um, you know, this is actually Java. Um, my best friend was Bitbucket for this project because the code was there. I could just kind of borrow it and modify it just a little bit and was able to get a system that does, um, if you guys are, are familiar with like chemical entity extraction, there's a tool that's called Oscar. So this has Oscar embedded inside of it, but it also has some NLP in, inside of it. So it actually builds out a very structured version of the sentences. You feed it in a sentence and it feeds out like different phrases and things. Um, but like I said, all of this is on Bitbucket. I didn't create anything great except I just imported it into a Java node and, and made it work. Um, and then this is the last, uh, the last use case or project that I'm going to talk about. So this is actually an active product project, and uh, Joaquin here is working on this with us right now. Um, so last year, we licensed Nime Server. So um, Nime Server gives us a couple things. One is probably the greatest thing it does is that it can automate things. So if you, have, if you guys have used Nime and you, wow, you think, wow, I wish I could just run this every morning at 6 AM, that's something that the server can do, and it, and it does a really good job of it. Um, in this case, we were trying something a little bit different. So uh, we decided to use our NIME server to use it as a search engine for a project. So we have another client that's built um, 
off somewhere else. Actually, Joaquin built it. Um, and we have a data prep. And if you guys are familiar with Lucene, um, Lucene is a, a searching and indexing system. Uh, but it's very lightweight. They actually recommend that you don't use it by itself, that you use it with um, something over the top of it, like Solar or Elasticsearch. Um, but in this case, we're using NIME as a wrapper around it. And uh, up on the, it basically acts as a REST service. We send it a JSON search query. It returns a JSON object as a search result. Um, and it, uh, we did this as a proof of concept just to try to rapidly create the POC for our business users. Um, uh, this one, you know, uses, uh, I think almost every Nine workflow that we have either starts or within one of the first few nodes has a database reader. So everything that we do hits some database. It's JDBCing out to, you know, any, any database that you can think of. And we have a lot of them. Um, so getting them into one place to work on a problem is, is usually, you know, part of the struggle. But anyway, this was the last project that I had to talk about. And... Thank you for your time.